is everyone so angry nowadays? You noticed? Our tempers are fierce, our fuses fragile. We speak in such elevated tones today. Maybe that's the only way to get through. There's only so much attention to go around, and if we want our voices heard, we need to shout. It's the era of anger. They're so angry in Britain that they voted for Brexit, an utterly self-defeating, self-immolating policy that will cripple the UK for decades to come. We're so angry here that our political system is utterly paralyzed and deadlocked. We don't view people holding different opinions as friends anymore, or even rivals. We consider them enemies, contemptible ignoramuses. It's sad, because anger blindfolds reason. That's why we call it blind rage. When we are overcome with anger, we cease thinking rationally. No passion disrupts mental clarity more than rage. You know what I mean, right? You've had that happen to you sometime in your life, at work, at home, in relationships. This tsunami of fury crashing through our defenses, flooding our carefully crafted islands of temperance leaving wreckage when the wave recedes. I think we've all experienced that kind of anger. We raged at the driver cutting us off on the highway, or when someone smacks into us on the sidewalk, their millennial countenance oblivious to anything but that device that they cannot disconnect from in their hand. Honestly, though, it's even worse when baby boomers walk around with their smartphones phones because it's not second nature for us as it is for our children. And there are few things more aggravating than having a 60-something person crash into you, oblivious to all the dangers of New York City, their face buried in a screen that they cannot fully decipher. <laughs> you know what, just thinking about this now, it makes me angry. <laughs> in your relationships, at home, at work, have you ever had someone who nips at your heels over and over again until he says something that causes you to snap. You say things and you do things that you later regret. It's almost as if raw passion overtakes us. And when we calm down, we ask ourselves, was that really me? This emotion, this passion, this rage is described in this week's Parsha. Upon descending from the mountain, the two tablets of stone in his hand, Moses came near the camp and saw the people dancing around the golden calf. According to the sages, it was the most serious betrayal in the entire history of the Jewish people, a history filled with betrayals. The rabbis described the sin of the golden calf with one Hebrew word, Hachet, the sin. One word is enough to identify for all time the unprecedented, contemptible disloyalty of the Israelites. And then the Torah states, Vayichar af Moshe vayishlach miadav et aluchot. And Moses was enraged, and he hurled the tablets from his hands and he shattered. The Hebrew phrase describing Moses' rage, vayichar af, elicits a mental image of Moses overcome with fury. 
Vayichar Av literally means his nose reddened and swelled. It paints a picture in our minds of a crimson-faced Moses, his nostrils flaring, a common physiological response to anger. Some rabbinic traditions are aghast. Did Moses actually do that? Take the two tablets that the Bible tells us was carved by the very finger of God and overcome with fury on his own with no divine permission, hurl these sacred stones to the ground and shatter them into pieces? Who gave Moses the right to destroy God's handiwork? Some traditional commentators excuse Moses' behavior. He feigned anger, they explained. He didn't lose control of his emotions. Rather, it was a question of leadership. The people needed to see him angry, but he himself was uncontrolled at all times. To support their view, these commentators point out that nowhere in the Bible do we read that God admonished Moses for shattering the tablets. But other sages understood the book of Exodus literally. In interpreting the verse describing the shattering of the tablets, they point to another verse in the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes. Do not be quick to anger, for anger dwells in the bosom of fools. These sages imagine God admonishing Moses. So Moses, you are assuaging your anger by shattering the tablets of the covenant? Would you want me, God, to assuage my anger by breaking stuff? Don't you know that the world would not even last for one hour? The rabbis encouraged us to control our emotions. They anticipated our contemporary discipline of, what do we call it today? Anger management. They teach when a person becomes angry, wisdom departs. In other words, when we're furious, we become stupid. Discernment and judgment leave us. Anger is counterproductive, counterproductive to our relationships, our mental health, and even our jobs. Moses' propensity to anger eventually shortened his career. His boss, the boss of all bosses, terminated him before Moses wanted to retire. Four decades after this incident of the golden calf, Moses again erupted in fury at the Israelites when seeking to draw water from the rock. Remember that story? He struck the rock rather than speak to it, and God's response was to decree that Moses could not lead the people into the promised land as he intended to end his career. Moses wasn't even granted the time to enjoy retirement. According to the Midrash, he pleaded with God to let him cross into the promised land, not as the leader. He said, God, I'll cross simply as one of the people. And God refused. I now understand, 50 years later, what my mother tried to teach me when I was young. Whenever I was filled with boiling anger, she would quote this Yiddish proverb to me, Retz Devan. Nobody really understands Yiddish anymore. <laughs> it means, go talk to the wall. What she was saying is, release your anger alone, not in public. Go pound the wall, curse the sky. Because if you rage in the presence of others, what they receive from you is the destructive emotion, but not the logic. 
As Desdemona said to Shakespeare's Othello, I understand the fury in your words, but not the words. We read in our Parsha and many other places in the Bible that God, too, gets angry, suggesting that anger is part of existence built into the very fabric of the universe. If God is prone to anger, how all the more so are we, mere mortals of flesh and blood? The sages who debated everything wanted to know the duration of God's angry episodes. How long do these divine bouts of anger last? When God gets angry, how long does God stay angry? That's the kind of question Talmudic rabbis loved to debate. Does God really get angry? And if so, how long does it last? Anybody want to guess? Huh? How much? The rabbis teach God gets angry when God gets angry. It lasts 158,888th of an hour. I don't even know what that means. I don't know if there are mathematicians here or scientists. Maybe you can tell me at the Oneg how much is 188,000 888th of an hour. And during that one, did I say 58,888th of an hour, Rabbi Yochanan teaches that Moses waited to petition God during that micro moment until God's wrath passed. Because when God is angry, even God's passion drowns out God's judgment and mercy. According to the Talmud, best for Moses to wait until the wrath passed. That's good advice for dealing with people as well. The enraged are impervious to reason. You just have to wait until it passes. It's true that anger can be a motivating force for good. Aristotle thought that anger could sometimes serve as a weapon for virtue and valor. But it's a dangerous weapon because, as Montaigne cautioned, our hand does not guide it. it guides our hand. We do not hold it. It holds us. Anger is not a policy. It is an emotion. Unless we can temper anger and organize it into a transformative force for good, for virtue and valor, it has the potential for personal and collective destruction. Perhaps the best advice is from the 18th century sage Rabbi Pinchas of Koretz. He taught, for many years I wrestled with my anger until finally I conquered him and placed him in my pocket. Now I take him out only when I need him. But I am so angry with him that I do never, do not ever want to take him out again. Ne 
Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Shari, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Shari, Malachi Elyon, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Shari. Shalom, Malachi, Shalom, Malachi, Elio, 
We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, Post Office Box 360, Stamford, Connecticut, 06904. Or you can call the JBS Pledge Line at 833-MY-JBS-TV. That's 833-695-2788. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. We thank you for your kind support.